Everybody, good morning. It is Friday, February 28th, 2020. Welcome to today's episode of Stocks for Breakfast. My name is Pete Renzulli, and today we're going to get right into it. They have started to call the coronavirus sell-off uh, as a possible pandemic situation, which is a big word, and I want to emphasize possible there. Today we're going to jump right into uh, some stocks in the news. We're going to jump into day trading, the intraday volatility. We're going to kind of stay away from a little bit of calling out longer term swing trades because I think it's, I don't want to be irresponsible right now. We are, um, there's a lot of people online right now who are, who are, are, are going a little bit overboard with trading the volatility right now to the retail trader. And quite honestly, I personally think it's irresponsible because we're not trading the charts anymore. This is a situation where um, there are much, much deeper uh, causes to the effect right now. Obviously, coronavirus is the number one reason that I'm discussing right now. So we're not looking at chart points. And I've, I've made a couple of calls myself this week where I've taken some small losses, looking for a spot to get long. We are in a much longer term bull market. However, <laughs> as we discussed, we have now um, within a week, retraced all the way back into what many would consider bear market territory where the spiders, the SPY and the Dow are now all the way below the uh, 200 period moving average, which many people consider the, the that kind of like that line in the sand where if you get below that, you're on the other side of the equation right now. Now the, the, the challenge with that is that it's very hard to invalidate two years worth of buying in five days. I, I completely understand we can't argue with price where it is, um, and, it, and it's all the way back below the 200, and we'll get to the charts in a second. Um, first, I want to cover a couple of different um, key things in the news. We actually do have uh, five different stocks uh, that are above their 20-period moving average that meet the price action, volume, volatility criteria for us to possibly be looking at a long I don't feel like it's smart right now for me to be calling out longer term swing trades or looking for a spot to get long. Um, I think I, I had a, a coaching call yesterday afternoon. It's a complete guess right now. Nobody's expecting us to be selling off a thousand points a day in the Dow right now. Um, and I don't want I don't want anybody guessing right now. We're kind of in damage control or aggressive swing trading, uh, excuse me, aggressive day trading. And I'm going to point out what that means. This is, by the way, if you are a professional day trader, somebody in front of your screen all day, not somebody who's doing it on their phone or doing it in between their other job, don't want to be doing that right now. If you're a professional day trader at your screen right now, you should be finding multiple opportunities to be involved right now because the volatility is just, and I'm going to say this in context of trading, not in the context of coronavirus, the volatility right now is amazing for short-term day traders. Longer term is a completely different situation. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to jump right into uh, some stuff that obviously we should be paying attention to going into today. A couple of stocks that are in play, uh, and then we're going to call it a week. So hopefully you'll have a good finish to the trading week. If you like the videos, I strongly, strongly would like to request that you click below, you click subscribe, and click the alert button. Um, you'll actually get emails from YouTube anytime we post a new video. We actually posted one yesterday that discusses uh, what it takes to trade for a living. I think that you might like that one as well. So let's, um, I'm going to share the screen and we're going to get right into the charts. All right. So right away, obviously we're talking about coronavirus here since the market, we are actually looking at a monster sell off again. You can see here, this news was published at 5 AM and it is pretty much across the board. European stocks are falling further which obviously leads us into um, everybody saying now the Fed absolutely needs to cut interest rates. They're call calling it for the next Fed meeting. Um, I have an opinion on this. Uh, I understand why people are calling for this. The Fed will probably do it. Um, but we are not talking about corporations having problems earning money and need interest rates cut to borrow money cheaper. We're talking about a much deeper problem. We're talking about supply chain issues in foreign countries because of the coronavirus. I definitely think that if this happens, which it looks like it's a strong likelihood that it will, I think that it, if, if it doesn't stop before then, which obviously it's three weeks from now, uh, maybe a little bit more, um, it will 
stop the bleeding, but we really need the headline that says we have it contained. And if and when that happens, hopefully sooner than later, that will be the major catalyst uh, towards the market turning around. Now, could you, should you be building positions? We'll, we'll get into that. We uh, take a look at the charts. Stock and play beyond meat. Obviously, the stock has been volatile over the last 12 months, very, very sensitive uh, to news. So this is a little bit more of a short-term play. If you like it as a long-term play, don't worry about the uh, bounces back and forth. And this, this has actually been a little bit of a difficult chart. I'm, I'm going to pull up the chart. Um, we had a couple of trades in this this year, a couple of trades from in the coaching group, uh, and you'll be able to see it here. Um, this here was a big uh, level that we called out in the summertime last year. We said, we're not going to do anything until it's out of this range. And you actually can see we had a pretty solid sell-off where the stock almost got a 50% haircut. Uh, haircut basically means in trading terms uh, that it, went, it, it basically got cut in half. So a little bit of good trading terminology there. What's super interesting about this stock is that even though it's got a short price history, which you can see here, it only started last year, uh, when it goes into a trading range, Generally speaking, when it comes out of that trading range, it's pretty active and pretty tradable. So you could see that we had one here in November through the end of the year, uh, excuse me, right through January, and we exploded through that. We were really, really looking to trade here. Let me, let me zoom this out a little bit. And uh, beyond, you can see that one of my favorite, favorite signals, and you probably want to write this down. I love inside candlesticks. We actually got what was close to an inside, inside candlestick here. We actually bounced $17 after this mice momentum moved to the upside. And I was like, great, here we go. We're going to look for another move, maybe make all the way back up to uh, past 150. And we just kind of went in a, in, a, in a funk. We kind of went sideways. So the bid that we bought on that pullback really didn't go anywhere. And now we're kind of in this trading range again, which from a trading perspective, you can see already we have one, two. This is now the third time that the stock has gone into a prolonged sideways price action, it's actually down $9 right now, despite the fact that they tripled revenue. Um, so we're looking for the stock to now be tradable through that. However, how much profit potential is it? We know $90 here is the level from which uh, buyers did something significant last time. And by the way, if you're looking at support and resistance, don't make it too complicated. Just look at a chart and say, where is the last place buyers or sellers did something significant? That's the real level. Don't worry. Is it major support, minor support? Don't try to be so crazy. Where is the last time buyers or sellers did something significant? The problem with short selling right now, it's already down below 100. 90 is the support, and we basically just came from 127. So it's actually down $30 prior to uh, today. So actually coming into today. So it's already down $30, despite the fact that there's a trading range here. So you only have $7 and already moved 30 from this most recent resistance. I think if I was looking to short sell it, I'd probably prefer for it to bounce a little bit higher, hold below this trading range, which is coming in right around 105, uh, and then look for a short sell down to 90. That would be the trade that I'd be making in this stock. Again, very sensitive to news. You have to be okay with the fluctuations in exchange for the next trade. Uh, but I also thought it was kind of cool uh, and interesting, um, the fact that we, we've made a lot of conversation this week around how much money by the smart money, how much capital is allocated uh, in, in duration in time. So in other words, I'm teaching you how to build an argument for a trade, and the more time that money was allocated, the longer the move, the larger the move, the more conviction you could have in the trade. And you can see here, this is a good example of it was only five days before this trade. So I love this individual setup where we had the inside inside breakout. It was good for $17, but there was not a lot of price history prior to that. So this is kind of a very short term trade. So I'm actually going to come back to this screen for a second. So what this essentially means is the more price action, the more money allocated over time by the smart money, you can have more conviction in your trade. So this chart of BYND of Beyond Meat is a super good illustration of how putting the pieces together and building an argument for a trade told us at that point that there was only five days of buying history. It was violent five days and it came out of that trading range, which was what we call fuel. So fuel is coming out of a trading range with large volume and a big, in this case, a big green candlestick and pulled back and gave us that inside inside candle for a chance to break out. And it was a perfect trade. It actually did explode. And we were looking for a little bit of a longer term play there. But 
it didn't follow through and we should not it, it follow through the one day for $17, which is a great one day game, obviously, but it didn't follow through on a longer term perspective because prior to that, there wasn't a lot of price history by the smart money. So I think this is a super good chart, super good. <laughs> it's early, super good chart to print out so that you could really understand your trade management and your trade expectation should be affected by the argument you built prior to putting the trade on. So the more conviction you should have based on the stronger the argument and the longer time period that smart money allocated capital, the lower your trade expectation for follow through based on the fact in this case, there was only five days of price history prior to that $17 move on the inside inside breakout. So this is a, a really good chart to print out uh, from a conviction level to, to walk you through how to manage the trade prior to even getting into it. So you might've chosen to take the $17 profit in one day. I was actually looking for a little bit longer term move. It didn't follow through, big deal. That's real trading, right? All right, so we're gonna go back to the charts and uh, take a look at a, um, another story in the news today, and that is uh, cloud computing um, getting on the radar now where Google is actually making a big investment. And look, why not? Microsoft and Amazon are making massive profits in cloud computing over the last several years. Why wouldn't Google get involved? So just as far as uh, stocks in play, absolutely keep an eye on these guys today. Uh, I just want to point out again what I had mentioned before about the 200 period moving average. And this is actually a good example as well of um, much longer term price action history. And you can see how long we're above the 200 period moving average versus what we just saw in Beyond Meat, where it was only five days. So you have a lot more conviction buying these pullbacks while it's above the trend line and above the 200. And this is obviously, uh, I dare to use the word, this is a black swan event. This is not something that anybody could have predicted. Now, I'm not, so, I'm not talking about the sell-off. I'm talking about the severity of the sell-off. If you go back to a video that I did earlier uh, last week, I actually did point out, and, and I'm not taking credit for this, so I, I want to be clear. Um, it's more of a trading lesson. I did point out that we were starting to see a lot more closes below the opening price as we were making new highs and indecision candles. And it was telling me that we were starting to weaken up there. And it's just something to keep an eye on. It's more of a trading lesson. Um, but as far as other stocks that we could possibly be looking at today, you can see most of the major stocks other than Square, which had earnings this week, just got absolutely shellacked. Uh, there's really no other way to put it. But there are a couple of stocks that fit the criteria today. APT, again, very similar to what we looked at and beyond before. Not a lot of price history. But if you're looking for something to bid, I would be looking to bid it as long as it's above the opening price if you're looking to day trade it. Etsy, actually closing now above the 200 period moving average. Now, this is a good example here too. Etsy has not been able to get above this price at all. So here's where traders get into trouble. You've had an inside candle breakout, really nice, right? If you're just looking at it independently, you're looking at it above the 200 period moving average, you're like, yeah, let's go. Closed above, it's above all the moving averages, had a positive day with the market getting crushed yesterday, but it hasn't been able to get above 60. Tried once, tried twice, and now this is the third time it failed there again. I do like Etsy if it can finally close above here for a couple of days, but again, a really good trade management and trade expectation lesson there to say, don't look at the price independent of the whole picture. You have to build an argument and it's having a hard time with 60. If it gets above 60, for all the reasons we just discussed, you can see here we actually have almost two full months of buying, again, comparing to what we looked at and beyond before, two full months of buying versus five days of buying, but we have resistance. So really a couple of closes above 60 on the daily chart, I feel a little more comfortable. And then we're looking at a swing trade up into the 70 level. I'm gonna keep that on the radar. That's actually an interesting one. LK, really not a lot of uh, good price action right now. Actually, the only good thing about this is it came up in the scan that it's above the key moving averages and closed positive. This is not a trade. If I was doing anything in this, I would be looking at something along these lines where I'm saying, okay, the stock is consolidating and I'd be looking for the next breakout. The only reason it came up in the scan is because it matched the criteria. But again, this is what separates you from being a chart reader to being a trader who actually makes money. You look at this, you put the pieces together and it's not a trade just because it closed above the open, just because it was up 1%, and just because it met the moving average criteria. It has to be conviction. And right now it really hasn't done anything from a, uh, 
either in a momentum perspective for the last week or so. Uh, next, we actually have an interesting one. If you're a uh, corporate business, you use Slack all day, every day. And Slack actually keeps bottoming out here, bounced, pulled back, closed above the open with the market hitting. Uh, I'd like to see it get above this most recent high before I got involved. You can see it, it broke a much longer downtrend since the IPO. Um, let's actually take a look at the volume and see how we look. Volume is okay. We got one good volume spike here, which um, we can consider that fuel again. If you're understanding now, based on a few videos, what fuel means, fuel means a large volume candle with a large green or red body from coming out of a trading range. And that's actually what we saw here. I'd like to see a little bit more uh, better price action here where we're closing above the open. But again, we're looking at the market. So this is something that will go in the radar uh, to look at in the uh, upcoming watch list. I actually want to finish uh, for day traders out there and, and basically um, continue to illustrate what it means to be a day trader in this market. Let me get the 200 off of the chart. The best, the best day trades right now are going to be the ones that are below the 200 period moving average while this story, excuse me, below today's opening price or the opening range. So what that basically means is the opening print of the day in the SPY yesterday was here. So we actually had a couple of different things going on yesterday where there was a semi bottom called on a very short period time period yesterday where this here, we actually had a bullish U-turn, a bullish reversal, where we traded below this price and reversed, and it actually ended up becoming a bullish engulfing candle, uh, followed by well bid. So this candle here traded below this candle, reversed, closed above this open, took out the prior day's high. So it really kind of flummoxed the people that short sold the stock, uh, and then it actually went well bid, which means higher highs and higher lows. And we called the short-term bottom here, but again, if you know and you've been listening, the highs and lows of every day are significant, and we couldn't get above today's the opening range again there, so we kind of failed, and we're just basically fluctuating back and forth. So really getting long here was kind of an aggressive longer-term play because you believe that the market um, bottomed out at that moment, and there was a lot of people uh, calling that yesterday, and, and quite honestly, with good reason. It's, it's from, a, from a trading perspective, you would expect it to. From a global news story, it's still kind of rough. Uh, but what I want to point out here is the significance of the opening price and why I keep calling it out uh, every single day. And again, if you're not day trading, you use the same technique on, on daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly candlesticks because that's tape reading. Is price moving closer to or further away from uh, price action? And what's super interesting and super exciting from a day trading perspective and from a trading lesson perspective you can see that we have this line. It would have been drawn the entire day if we were trading together. Price actually ended up failing, coming back below the opening price and resistance held right here. This is the area and the price level to have looked for a sell short because now we had confirmation in the afternoon that we held what is a significant level, which is the opening price. We end up having an inside candlestick here after the failure and the breakdown of this inside candlestick right here is the entry, which is right around 304 and basically a $7 move to the downside into the close in the SPY in just the last hour of the day. If you missed this inside candlestick breakdown, you actually had another one here and you had a swing high here. So there were multiple opportunities to look for a sell short in the afternoon as a day trader sitting in front of the screen all day. That's the key. Um, so again, Major news here again. I'm just going to come back on the screen. It's Friday. Major news here again. There's a couple of stocks in the news. We just called out a couple of stocks. But again, if it's a longer term situation, completely different scenario. We're looking at a black swan right here. They're using the word possible pandemic. So from a longer term perspective, from even from a swing trading perspective, I don't feel comfortable right now giving exact levels because support and resistance levels are kind of out the window right now. Could we reverse today? Sure, it's a possibility. I'd only recommend actively trading right now if you're in front of your screen and you're a professional trader who can get in and out, who has discipline. Um, so that is stocks for breakfast today. Hopefully these lessons are also helping as well as the stock calls that we're making and the analysis of the market. Strongly recommend you print out that chart of the SPY versus the chart of BYND and, you can, and even uh, WORK, W-O-R-K, to see the difference between five days worth of price action, three months worth of price action, and six or seven months worth of price action to give you a really good visual representation of what it looks like and why you should or shouldn't have confidence or conviction in how much follow through you should expect and how that's going to translate into 
uh, how long you hold the trade or manage a position. So if you like today's video, if you like all the videos, hopefully you do. Uh, my name is Pete Renzulli. Please click subscribe below and uh, you'll get updates. Have a great weekend and um, let's hope for this um, global news to hopefully have a resolution soon. Have a great weekend, everybody.